I'm just taking a look at this AW11 auction that just finished up on Bring a Trailer. No reserve, 1988 Toyota MR2 supercharged 5 speed, and it sold for $16,500 today, June 1st, 2022. You can see it has 71,000 miles shown. This stood out to me because $16,500 I don't think is very high for an AW11 in 2022. Let's take a look. You can see here there's quite the range on AW11s. Check this one out. 51 grand it looks very similar right to this one now this has twice the miles but what makes this one worth over fifty thousand dollars and the reason i would cite for why this went for comparatively little money is just shortcoming of the seller this car looks poorly prepared this 1988 toyota mr2 is powered by a supercharged 1.6 liter inline four paired with a five speed manual transaxle and is finished in red over gray cloth service completed during current ownership is said to have included replacing the clutch components, timing belt, water pump, accessory belt, supercharger pulley, and tires. The car was refinished in red under prior ownership. Cracks are present in the driver's side mirror, the right rear quarter window trim, and the lower portion of the windshield. All right, well, it looks like it's discontinued here on toyotapartsdeal.com, but if we go over here to Venice Toyota in Venice, Florida, they appear to have one in stock for $690. But that really sucks that you're selling a car with a cracked windshield on Bring a Trailer. What the hell, man? Do better. Power is sent to the rear wheels via a five speed manual transaxle. Service in 2019 is said to consist of installing an Exedi clutch kit, resurfacing the flywheel, and replacing the clutch master and slave cylinders. A solid roller clutch pedal clevis kit clevis? Clevis? was reportedly fitted in 2020. All of this is reportedly and allegedly. If you own a car, you should also own a three ring binder that you're putting all of your receipts in for that car. Specifically so that when you go to sell it, if anybody has any questions about this kind of thing, you can just point to that binder and tell them to fuck off. This is just a few months ago and it sold for over $10,000 more in what I would argue is a less desirable color. I think that the red is much hotter. This one only sold for 11, but it has 100,000 more miles than the one that just sold today. But you can see there's some other high water marks here, $30,000. Here's one with 39,000 that sold for 42 grand. This one sold for $20,000 with substantially more miles into six digit territory. And has the market really cooled off that much? I really don't think so. Going into the winter, this sold for more money with more miles. And why is that? Well, the first thing that I'm noticing on all of these cars that sold for more, you can see they all have the factory pinstriping clearly visible, whereas the one that sold today doesn't. And I'm just going to verify that real quick. Yeah. Looking closely at the car, you can see, oh, look here, there's, there's no badging on the trunk. The decals are missing. Let's use this other red one to compare. Just look at the rear deck lid and the mud flaps. You can see the text that says Toyota MR2, supercharged, and also on the rear bumper you can see the pinstriping here and that follows around the side where it says supercharged on the door here's some close-ups of the decals on the trunk lid and there you can see on the door as well it says supercharged with that extra thick pinstripe right well over here we don't have any of that and you can see that the raised lettering on the mud flaps has just been painted red you can have a respray that's fine but why not do the finishing touches and make it look 100 percent because that stands out to me like a sore thumb one other thing that i noticed in the initial picture as well if you look at the surrounds on the headlights the one on the passenger side is either loose or just isn't properly positioned and that's immediately apparent even in this thumbnail image at, at the very top, the first picture, you know, you can see that standing out clearly right here. But that, the lack of pinstriping, the lack of decals, in the second picture as well, uh, these are just things that you notice if you looked at a few of these. Also, in the first picture, you know, we haven't gotten very far into this auction, but as you can see in the very first picture, it's on stock wheels, but they're dirty. And if we go into the gallery and look at them up close, you can see they're using like the, the outside clamp on wheel weights, which is just such a bad look. You know, you can ask for them to use stick-ons and that will appear a lot better. Also, in this picture I'm noticing there's no valve stem cap. I mean, it's little things, you know? And well, I guess while we're still in this picture, look, you can see overspray on every single bolt here, 
here, here, here. That's a pretty big scratch that this guy didn't bother to fill in with touch-up paint. Uh, there's some chips over here. We can also see that the tire is a general Alti Max, which is a pretty cheap, crappy tire. Now, unfortunately, that's probably just the name of the game when you're when you're running wheels this small. I'm not sure if these are 14s or 15s, but either way, your options are going to be extremely limited now. I used to own an SW20, and I had to get different wheels for it because there just weren't any good tires available for the stock wheel sizes. It's totally understandable that this guy would have cheap tires on here, but personally, when he got these balanced, I would have asked for stick-on magnets on the inside so that I could polish up the outside edge of the wheel. Now you can see there's some marring on here, I mean, that's to be expected, but the whole thing is dirty. He did not bother to really clean these wheels very well. If I owned this car and it was overspray like this, I'd probably go ahead and replace all of this hardware uh, with new black hardware, or I don't know, maybe sandblast the old hardware, or you know, put it in a rock tumbler or something, I don't know, whatever you'd want to do to get yourself some unpainted fasteners here so that it doesn't look like you completely half-assed this, even though you did. I mean, this kind of treads into the territory of am I covering up bad work or am I just making the best of what's there? But let's start at the very beginning and work our way through here and see what else we find. You can see that headlight gap. There's like a little scuff down here, big deal. There's definitely something going on in the quarter here, but also the door looks a little wavy to me, uh, but it does look like the paint has a nice gloss. I mean, overall, this is a pretty good appearance. He does have the antenna up, unfortunately. The headlights are on. I'm assuming the car is running. I would have put that antenna down. It kind of just looks like it's broken. Oh, going back to the first picture, you can see that it's, it's stuck about a foot out. So probably would have been a good idea to replace that antenna probably cost you less than a hundred dollars. Now some things you can't fix, it kind of looks like the side skirts were painted in place and based off of all of the hardware in the front, I would assume that was the case. So it's all going to be painted together and eventually the seam where the body panels meet, particularly like right here, if this is all painted together, eventually this is going to crack. My SW20 was actually resprayed. There's a trim piece that runs right along this pillar. It's made out of vinyl and you can't get them anymore. So people just paint right over them and then the paint starts to crack along there and my clear coat was starting to peel like right about here. The paint will crack and then it'll start to chip and this is going to all start looking quite bad in a hurry. I mean, I am being very nitpicky. Overall, this is a really nice looking MR2. It's just a shame that they didn't have the badging on it or do a little bit better job cleaning it up. You can see some dents uh, right in front of the fuel door. You can see a ding. Oh, what is, what is going on here? Look at the front lip. Look at how much space there is over here, how, where it is. And then it just, it goes up on this side. What happened here? You can you can definitely see that the driver's side of the lip is much higher than the passenger side. And this angle really accentuates that, but nothing else really that bad looking. You can see some overspray on the back of the mud flap there inside the wheel well. Some more painted fasteners here. I guess they painted the mud flaps on as well. I would have taken off the mud flaps, the side skirts, probably remove the fender liners, all that little hardware, take out the side duct, you know, anything that would come off the antenna. I wonder if they painted around the antenna. I would keep some touch-up paint handy for cleaning up all these little chips and stuff. Did not bother to clean these wheels at all. There's just corroded crap all over them, like hard water spots or something, or aluminum corrosion. This picture's completely out of focus. You can see the building really well here. Why did you include this? <laughs> this picture really uh, brings to mind something that Vukos is adamant about is that pictures help sell cars. And he takes excellent photos. He photographed my ZZW30 for Bring a Trailer and that came out incredible and I think helped with the price quite a bit. I would absolutely say having someone with a good camera to take photos for you instead of just going, oh, it's, you know, the golden hour. I'm gonna go take photos with my iPhone and that's what we're gonna use to sell my car on Bring a Trailer. I and mean, that's just foolish. Woo, look at those. Got some big rock chips here right in front of the passenger headlight and a ton on the, you can see there's just tons and tons of chips down here and flaking paint as well. The seller is being honest, however, he's showing close-ups of the chips, so that's good. You wouldn't want to conceal these things if they were actually on the car. That would be infuriating as a buyer and potentially screw up your deal. 
you know, it takes months to set up a bring a trailer auction, so you wouldn't want to screw over a buyer and have the deal go south when they show up to pick up the car. The emblem's looking quite faded, but you know, patina, whatever. Hard to say from this image, but it, it kind of looks like right here along the edge of the badge that this was just taped off. And based off of everything else that we've seen about this paint job so far, I would assume that the badges were left in place. Yeah, again, they did not take off the front lip when they did the respray. You can see that here again. This is a piece of foam that just got sprayed over. Now all of that paint is eventually going to chip off or the foam itself will deteriorate and you're going to wind up with cracking paint here. This just really isn't a very good paint job. I mean, the thing looks like an excellent 10 footer to be sure, but it's just these little details that really detract from the value here. They really stand out. Now let's take a look at this headlight issue again, that headlight surround hanging off and then you can see it looks like it's just not clipped on properly here. I mean, you probably wouldn't even have to buy anything or do anything special here, but you could have fixed that massive gap in the surround and the car would have looked that much better for it. Yeah, look at that big gap there. That looks terrible. This side looks fine. Got some rusty hardware here. Ugh. <laughs> that looks like a bunch of stuff that probably shouldn't have gotten paint on it to me up in here. Ugh. Got some leaves stuck up in here. Some bugs. All stuff that you could have removed before taking photos. A little scuff. BFD. That's that's totally acceptable. It's not a big deal. More scuffs on the, the edge of the lip. It's a very small, low, tiny car. I mean, that's to be expected. Uh, broken mirror. I wonder if these are particularly hard to find. No idea on what an AW11 replacement driver's side mirror would cost, but that's really unfortunate as well. They did not take out the door handles when they resprayed this. You can see it's looking pretty crusty there. This is a pretty complicated area to paint. I wonder how much of this trim they actually took off. It kind of looks like what happened here is they painted the whole thing red and then went over the trim with black paint, maybe. A lot of bubbling and stuff going on here. A lot of, you know, there's a gap that should be here, but it seals up in parts. I, I, I'm really not sure, but it, it kind of looks like this might have gotten resprayed with black spray paint. Moving on to the back, I think that we're looking at even more corroded hardware here. Yeah, you can see there's serious corrosion on these bolts here. I mean, really how much effort would it have been to clean that up? And also you can see a trim piece hanging down here. Some missing hardware here. I don't know what is going on here, man. Is this a wire or is it a piece of trim that the guy just, should it be going down around this part? Why is it stuffed up in here? Tail lights look fine. He probably took those out before getting it painted. Uh, looks like there's a, some cracking in the bumper from being pushed in. Shit happens. All this stuff resprayed in place, very obviously. Does not look good. The antenna is stuck at half mast. That's a damn shame. Looks like it started to rain while he was taking these photos. A little cracked piece of trim, more cracks. It's, uh, and again, you know, it's good that the guy is taking photos of the stuff and letting you know what you're getting into. Looks like they resprayed the door jams as well, so that's good. Taking a look at the wheels again. These are really dirty, I mean, why wouldn't you have cleaned these better before taking photos? I mean, these are so corroded and filthy. And three of them don't have weights and one does. What's, I mean, maybe they balanced out that way. Maybe some of them have magnets. Who knows what's going on here? But also, you know, valve cap, valve cap, valve cap. No valve cap. Dude, the fact that the guy would take a picture with one of the valve caps missing, I mean, the audacity of it. That is so lazy. You know, maybe I'm being a little anal about these things, but people notice them. And if they don't notice them directly, they notice them subconsciously, and it gives you an overall lower opinion of the vehicle once it all starts to add up. Inside the seats are looking pretty good. Maybe some, some color fade, I guess, but I mean, they look clean. Color fades kind of just kind of be the name of the game here because, you know, T-top car. That's just how it's gonna be. Oof, what is going on here? What a mess. We have some aftermarket audio and it does not look good. Just a sloppy mess of wires. Got some Slava Ukraini wires over here. It looks like an amp kit, but what else is going on here? Look how brown the edge of the seat is here. I think this photo is with flash and this is without, or... I don't know what the difference is exactly between these two photos, but this one looks a hell of a lot cleaner and nicer than this one. But he included both, so <laughs> who knows. And this thing back here seems to just keep moving around. Whatever this thing is, is this the wiring for your amplifier that's behind the driver's seat? Does it run instead of through the firewall or through an existing grommet? Did you run it like around the glass and just like tuck it over? This is, what are you doing? <laughs> this is so silly. Get your shit right, dude. 
And it's making me think, along with the passenger seat looking like this and, and seeing like crumbs of dirt and crap down in the, the footwell and also noting that there's no floor mats at all in this car, that this guy just didn't really care that much. Just an, another just lack of attention to detail. And then also over here on the door, you can see all of the door hardware is painted red. Now, I guarantee normally this bar is not body color. Then he has a Pioneer, like a modern Pioneer touchscreen head unit here, which honestly, pretty minimalist. It doesn't look bad. When it's on, it's a little bit more distracting in the photos. If I had the factory head unit to install in place of that, I probably would have. You can see there's a crack in the dash. That's something that can't really be helped. Um, the shift number badge here is all scraped up. I wonder if he could have bought a replacement one of those. The steering wheel, instrument cluster, those look really nice. Oh, there's a keyless entry on his keychain. Does this thing have like a Viper alarm system? Is the harness gonna be all hacked up? What's going on there? Man, that seat stain is really unfortunate. Like it looks like it's growing moss or something. But overall, the interior is not bad. I mean, there's a little crack in the dash, whatever. Call this like a seven out of 10, right? This isn't that bad. And again, you have to be, you know, maybe it's worth reminding yourself, this is a pretty damn cool car with low mileage. And it seems like most everything works. There's just a, a sloppy owner did some silly things. Yeah, I'm noticing up close, there's also a pretty thick layer of dust on everything. Bring a microfiber towel, bring interior cleaner and all that kind of stuff with you when you go to take photos. And if you notice that your pictures are coming out looking like this, clean it up, man. It's not hard. Ew. Looks like we've got some rattle mitigation here with some little pieces of Velcro. Can't fault him for that. What the fuck is a DS18 Pro? I see that they are in current production. They look like ass. The first seller on the list over here is Walmart. I don't see any reputable car audio companies anywhere in here. I see Amazon, Walmart, eBay, and then it's on to the second page. There's no crutch field here. For just a few bucks more, you could have bought a reputable brand with a grill. Buy a black speaker with a black grill. You know, you can cheap out and get a coax replacement for your existing factory speaker if like the cone is torn or the, you know, if the surround is rotted out and you just need new speakers. I mean, that's not the end of the world, but I would have tried to at least reuse the factory grills if possible. Or, you know, if I was presented with this, I would have taken out those DS8 pros ASAP and, and gone and gotten a cheap set of Rockfords or something. And I wonder if some back to black would have cleaned up this handle over here on the door, aka a door handle. These look so shitty. That stands out. And just the fact that the guy would use shitty parts like that instead of a reputable brand. I mean, hand in hand with the bad paint job, hand in hand with the weird wiring and the exposed wiring just hanging out behind his seat. I mean, it's all just so sloppy. It starts to make you wonder, what about the mechanical aspect of this car? How's the engine doing? Because he lists that it has a new timing belt and other things. How many corners did he cut on that timing belt job? Did he call around and take the absolute cheapest quote he could find? I would guess, yeah. Really, I wonder if some back to black would have helped here. Back to black, I mean, in my experience, it works on just about any plastic. I would have tried that here for sure. He has the T-top covers, that's good. These are just some really, bad photos and there's like hair in them. So in some of these pictures, this has a Massachusetts license plate, which is what I thought I saw earlier. Expired in 2020 from the looks of it. And then it also has a Rhode Island license plate. So if these pictures expired in 2020, how long has this thing been sitting? How old are these photos? What does the car look like now? Looks like he threw some money at a hella horn or something up front there. Ooh, got some serious corrosion there. Makes you wonder why this car was resprayed, doesn't it? Because so many of these that you see are quite rusty. Wonder what that respray is concealing. Okay, now here the intercooler is painted black. Dang, this expensive one had a leather interior. What a sexy beast. Sheesh. That is nice. And look at that factory stereo in place. Look at the floor mats. Look how much cleaner everything is in here. Yeah, no, the intercooler shouldn't be painted black. All right, so we're gonna see some serious differences between these two engine bays. So this is the $51,000 engine bay. And here's the one that just sold today. Yikes. Clean? Not. Yeah, got some serious overspray coming in right here. Uh, we got some like hot glue holding everything together up front. There's all your vins, there's the original paint color underneath. So yeah, he didn't do a color change. He just 
resprayed it red, so maybe it just had clear coat failure. You're rolling the dice on that one. The underside didn't look very bad to me. Okay, if you want to show a set of T-tops, here's a tip. Don't just set them on concrete. What are you doing? I would recommend that you show them off by putting them on the car. Oh my god, dude! So there you go, that's all the photos of this thing. And that's probably why it sold for so cheap. You know, there's a lot of things that you could have done to this car to make it show better in photos, to raise less suspicion and questions from prospective buyers. You know, why is there a wire hanging out over here? Why are all these wires exposed? Where are the decals? Why is this so obviously a respray? Why'd you paint all the hardware? Why are the wheels dirty? You know, does the power antenna work? No, obviously not. Why didn't you fix any of these things? It's a lot of things that you could have taken care of, would have cost you maybe a few hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars, but you would have gotten your money back. It's just really unfortunate what happened here. This could have gone for a lot more. Looking through the comments, most people seem to be pretty positive about this car. However, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, one of the first comments that has 13 thumbs up says, A quickly sell it red respray that lost the SC specific side moldings and did not bother to restore any of the factory decals or pinstriping. These are key visual elements, and the painter didn't bother to remove the front lip and side skirts, instead painting over the black molding gaskets. This is disappointing. Hopefully the mechanics that did the maintenance were more detail oriented than the paint shop. So exactly as I was just saying, these are things that are going to stick out to you as a potential buyer and drag down the value of this car in your mind. And a lot of it could have been fixed. It didn't have to go this way. Anyway, thanks for taking a look at this AW11 with me, guys. We got more videos coming for you every week, Mondays and Thursdays, typically. So hit that like, hit that subscribe, all that good stuff. Join our Discord, follow me on Instagram, all the shit. All the links are in the description. Hit them all. Do all of it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Collect your car feed now with over 4,000 subscribers.